What is going on with YouTube? This is Regular Dave coming at you with another video. I know, I know. I'll get back into my regularly scheduled program after this video. This is my last one. The Galaxy S5 versus the Galaxy Note 3. Which one is going to win? Which one am I keeping? Which one am I selling? All right, man. We got the brand new Galaxy S5 known by its dimpled back versus the Galaxy Note 3 known by its massive size. All right, man, we're going to jump right into it. We're going to talk about performance. Now, a lot of times people focus on specs, but really, I like to take phones out. I like, to, you know, real world issues, real life situations and judge a phone by that. I'm not going to just base something uh, from a spec sheet that I read. Now, you got a phone with th three gigs of RAM, a phone with two gigs of RAM. Uh, sometimes something like that matters. Sometimes it doesn't. Now, I've had the Galaxy Note 3 since September. Um, on release day and I could say to this day I haven't been able to tame this beast I've never been able to slow it down nothing I've done on this phone has made it hiccup stutter slow down or anything Galaxy S5 I've had it since Friday which has been four days I could say that I have been able to slow this phone down and I'm not purposely trying to do it but it has happened even down to the fingerprint scanner um, there's been times where well if we can get it if we can get it to work course it's not gonna work because i'm trying to shoot a video <laughs> uh there's been times where with the fingerprint scanner i've got it to recognize and unlock and it's taken like two seconds to unlock um i'm a pretty heavy user a multitasker and that's when i've noticed the phone slows down there'll be times where i'm looking at instagram and then i switch to facebook and then somebody texts me and then i do something else go to the calendar and you will notice uh, at times a slowdown now i'm not going to say that this is not a fast device it's a very fast device but when pitted against the galaxy note 3 you will notice a difference with performance uh, you do have to watch yourself when you're multitasking with this device not such a bad thing i'm used to doing that only since getting a galaxy note 3 have i not had to worry about bogging my phone down but if you have a galaxy note 3 and you're switching to a galaxy s5 that will be um an issue not to take nothing away from the galaxy s5 it's a great phone it is a very fast phone but performance wise doesn't quite live up to the galaxy note 3. now let's talk about the elephant in the room the screen size um a lot of people, when they got a phablet or got a note to say, people said, yo, I will never go back down to a smaller screen. That's actually what I said. I said, yo, I'm, yo, I can't imagine myself having a screen smaller than this. But when something like this comes around, uh, it makes you consider it. Definitely. The, the clarity of the screen. And don't forget, this is 5.1 inches. This is 5.99. This is still a large screen. You put this against an iPhone, it's still a humongous screen. Um, it's a beautiful screen. This has made me consider going back down to a smaller phone. This is a game changer of a screen, in my opinion. All right. So another thing um, that could possibly, you know, make you switch or make you question your Galaxy Note 3 is the form factor. Now, not to say that this guy is just too big and it's going to ruin your life and you won't be able to carry it around. And it'll be like those fake memes that you see in people talking on tablets. But something about a form factor of a phone this size, I think this is like my sweet spot. Um, with the form factor is this 5.1 inch screen because in the hand it, it, it's literally a perfect fit for for me it's just it doesn't get any more perfect than a phone this size i don't know if it's because i've been carrying the galaxy note 3 which can be uncomfortable with one-handed use um but this phone nailed it as far as you know in the hand pocketability is that a word i don't know this phone has definitely nailed it so yeah i lied to myself i would consider going back down to a smaller screen uh given the right circumstance and the galaxy s5 definitely fits the right circumstance all right man let's talk about a couple features and this one you know what i don't want to take the easy way out with judging these phones but i'm gonna have to because it really just boils down to what works for you now a lot of the features and most of the features that were targeted around the galaxy note 3 were targeted around hold on let me get it the s pen and it's funny <laughs> i took the s pen in my out of my phone because that's probably the first time i've taken the s pen out of my phone this year um a lot of the things were featured around the s pen and it's just not a feature i use uh i've never it's never come natural for me to just think about taking a pen on, out of my phone and drawing on the screen and moving things around and shifting things here that's kind of really not why i buy a phone 
Um, and I knew that going into the Galaxy at Note 3, and it overcomes those issues because it still does everything I wanted to do. It's just that it has features that I cannot benefit from. Now, if you're a business user or a, you know, a business person, this, this phone is probably the one for you. Meanwhile, this one has a feature on it that doesn't really benefit me either. That's the finger, the, the heart, heart rate monitor. Now, as y'all can see in my videos, I got a couple extra LBs on me. Not really using a heart rate monitor these days. And I'm going to be honest with you, I can never see myself using a heart rate monitor on a phone. Luckily, it's just some hardware built into a phone that doesn't obstruct anything. It doesn't bother me. It's just something there that I'm not going to use. So these things are really targeted after two different people. Um, and it just really boils down hardware wise, uh, the special features around the phone about which one works for you. Now, we will talk about the fingerprint scanner on the Galaxy S5. Oh, I got some mixed I got some mixed issues with this because it's a great idea, but it's it's really not up to say something like the iPhone's fingerprint scanner that just works. This is technology that you have to work. Um, and that's not how technology should work to me. Technology should just work. I shouldn't have to try to work the technology. And that's what the fingerprint scanner ends up being. Uh, let's see. It has these dots that can kind of fool you. And this is it just takes me a while to figure out that the monitor, the, the, the scanner is not in the screen, it's in the button, but these, this little wave makes you wanna just swipe down this whole screen, but you really don't have to, you just need to swipe the button of when it works. Now, the, pro, the percentage of time it works, I'd say it's like 55, 60%, it works a lot. You gotta kinda know how to work it. Um, and in a real life situation, like I had last night where I was at the bar and I had a drink in my hand, there's many times I just couldn't get it to work. You have to be holding the phone the right way. Um, it just, it, it's just too many issues with it. I prefer the iPhone's method of just holding your finger there. That's the easiest way to do it. Pretty sure there's some patent issues of why that couldn't take place, but I prefer that method. Um, fingerprint scanner. Luckily, you don't have to use it. There's still the regular way to swipe the unlock or enter your the passcode or however you want to do it to get some security on your phone but they definitely need to refine and improve on that. Now, the camera, I'll talk about that really quickly because I'm not a photographer. This has a better shooter on it. I don't know if it's the megapixels or the lens or the sense uh, sensor. I don't know, but not to say that this takes bad photos in you know, um, natural lighting situations. It takes very capable, great photos. So does this one. Um, in lower light situations, this one outshines the Galaxy Note 3. Um, I've just seen enough photos to know that this is a better shooter. I'll leave it at that. Let's talk about another big thing to me. That's the user interface. I don't know if Samsung is still calling it a touch whiz or touch interface, or I don't know what they're calling it, but it's improved greatly since my first Samsung device, the Galaxy S3. Um, it is flatter. People, you keep hearing people say, oh, it's a flatter user interface. And I, you know, it was, here we go again with the fingerprint scanner. And as you can see, it was a little stutter, a little lag right there, but with uh, the user interface, what they mean by flatter is it's just everything looks like it's kind of built into the screen. If you look at these buttons along the top, they don't have a 3D look to them. They look like they're built into the interface. Uh, kind of hard to explain, but you, in person, you can tell what people mean by it's flatter. And by the fact that it's flatter and how great the screen is, it's a great combination. Um, a lot of little subtle touches. I don't know if they did that in the Galaxy S4, but say you're in an app like Instagram, somebody calls you, it doesn't take over the whole app and give you the contact information. And you're pretty much tied to either answer the call or, or, or reject the call. It actually brings up a little box, a box that you could even move around. It doesn't abstract the screen when you're answering phone calls. Almost reminds me, I want to say of WebOS um, by not really obstructing you that much. And you can kind of continue doing what you're doing. Um, and I just little tweaks like that. I can't say if that was in the Galaxy S4 because I didn't own one, but little tweaks like that give it the edge over the Galaxy Note 3. I don't know if the Galaxy Note 3 is going to get this version of the user interface in an update, but I mean, this user interface, while I still have some issues with just how it looks, um, how the icons look are not that gorgeous, but the user interface in general has improved greatly and uh, trumps the Galaxy S, the Galaxy Note 3. All right, man, I've rambled on long enough. Let's get to the conclusion, which one I'm gonna keep, which one is being put up immediately on eBay or Craigslist, unless I haven't figured it out. 
I'm going to go with the Galaxy S5 and I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep the Galaxy S5 and the Galaxy Note 3 is getting sold. I know I got probably got a lot of Galaxy Note 3 uh, people in the comments saying, yo, I love my phone, which I do love the Galaxy Note 3. And I, I didn't have any idea that this phone was going to win. I thought like, yeah, it won't be able to beat my Note 3 out and I'll end up selling my S5. But no, it just boiled down to the screen, the user interface and the form factor of the phone. It just fits me better. I just like the smaller form factor. Um, I, you know, I'm, I don't feel like I'm sacrificing a whole lot with the screen and let's see if I, I oh, it really doesn't work with my right hand. It just, I, I don't know why it doesn't work that well with my right hand. <laughs> this is showing you guys that it just hit, hit and miss. Um, but overall, I just felt like it was a device more built for me than a galaxy note three is now. Will I get phone envy when the note four comes out more than likely. And you may be seeing another one of these challenges um in a few months when the note 4 comes out but as for right now i feel like this is the better phone for me get active in the comments let me know what you guys think are you deciding on either one do you already have one and thinking about changing or are you saying screw it i'm waiting for the galaxy note 4 which is probably the smartest decision all right get active in the comments i'll get you guys another time peace